Welcome to Just Lyrics with Jake Michael. Today I am speaking with Carolyn Cott, who has been writing music for a million years and <laughs> performing everywhere. And oh, yeah. since I don't believe in introductions, I will start with the first question. Oh boy. What music did you listen to as a little child, like a five-year-old? So I'm trying to get the background into what your influences were. There were two things that I listened to, three things, time and time again till I drove my parents nuts. Stravinsky's Firebird. This is as a child? Uh, this is as a child, I was, you know, strange. Um, the uh, 76 Trombones, what's the name of that movie? So uh, the no, Music no, Man? The Music Man. Uh -huh. The Music Man and My Fair Lady. And the, My Fair Lady. The, the score to that, yeah. And do, so your parents that. weren't listening and then sort of the ambient music in the background of your youth was... They didn't do a lot of listening. Dad did a little bit of classical music and... But yeah, I would sit and uh, rock <laughs> listening to Stravinsky's Firebird and picture uh, a bird in a forest fire on the, in a forest fire and get very worried. You just Oops. turned off your. You yeah, I know. I, there we go. Sorry. That's all right. I'm back. And then, uh, so, okay, so then, like the 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 lyrics that you would have been hearing would have been <clears throat> sort of show tune sort of stuff. Yes, which clearly has absolutely no connection to what I write. I don't know about that. Oh God. I'm not sure that's true, um, because a lot of the stuff you do is, uh, it's very, I don't know, very literary. It's not like you're doing James Brown, ooh, uh, 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 baby, hot pants, uh, 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 hot pants. Maybe I should. That'll be my next song. Okay. Well, Maybe not the hot pants, but you ooh, could work ooh, ooh, baby. Ooh, baby. Not a lot of ooh, babies. Okay, question number two. What was the first song you wrote that made you think I can actually write an, a, a lyric, an original lyric, not just you trying to sound like somebody else, something that's really, it, <laughs> it can, or if you can remember? Well, I'm not sure that I concluded that I could actually write lyrics, but my first song was, I cannot remember the exact content, but I was reading, it was in the 70s, I was reading Kierkegaard and, and Sartre. So it was, it didn't rhyme. I think maybe two words rhymed and it was rather existential and a little cosmic, you know, the times. Uh -huh. And I think I managed to work the words being, nothingness and existence into the song. Uh -huh. uh, a friend of mine listened to it and he said, you know, I'm not sure those words are so great, <laughs> but that's my first song. And were you playing and guitar at that time? Yeah, 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 yeah. I always, yes. So I always you, start with words and then I write the music around the words. And you started playing guitar before you were writing songs or? Well, in junior high school played for about you know 20 minutes. And then in college. Um, in the seventies? Played in the seventies, yeah took a train across Canada and brought my Sears Silvertone and started writing or playing around with music then. And then started writing music, writing songs in about the same time. So as soon as you started to learn to play the guitar, you started writing songs. Right, right. Because I have to do everything the hard way. I have to make things up. You know, I didn't take lessons except for a few along the way that didn't stick. So, you know, I had to create because I like creating and driving myself a little nuts. Where did you learn chords? Because you mean I said you said I took eyebrows wrinkled lessons. Well, <laughs> it, oh, it makes me want to know. Uh, oh, I think I... lessons. <laughs> Chris Adams attempted to teach me for probably I don't know two months. I was not a good student. A long time um, ago. No, no. I just would sort of, I think I got a chord book and made some, but then I would go beyond that and go for what sounded good for me. So I would invent the kind of chords that you and the rest of Many Rivers would complain about because it sounded good. So uh -huh. I kind of, you know, I know the basic chords, but I don't remember music theory, although I studied piano as a kid. Well, 
played, not studied. Right. But uh, yeah, I decided I was going to learn to play lead. So I uh, hired Chris Adams to help teach me and that didn't I didn't practice. And For our viewers, Chris Adams is a, are a uh, he's, he's a, I think he went to the Berkeley School or something. So he's a guitarist from, from this, who we both he's know. Classically trained. He knows he's what he's doing. Region. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe I'll interview him on the next good idea. Idea. Um Okay, that's uh, that's good. Now here's the one. This is the make believe question. You're in. The, you're trying to get a job in the Brill Building in 1964. You know the Brill Building. I don't building? know what the Brill Building is. You do? No, I don't know the Brill Building. That was this building in New York where there were all these music publishers and songwriters like Carol King and, and ah. like Neil Sedaka. All these. It was like this. If you got hired to work for these guys, and, and at the time, I believe there actually were people who were just lyricists, you know, wow. like Rogers and Hammerstein, you know, they were actual, they did that part. So it's 1964, you're trying to get a, a job in the Brill Building. I'm the guy you have to get the job from. Why is it that I should give you a job? What is it? Wh why? Why are you a good enough lyricist to get a job in the Brill Building? <laughs> well, do you want the honest answer or the made-up answer? I don't care. Give me. You want? You could give me both. Well, here's the honest answer. I'm not a good lyricist. I'm a better writer than I am a lyricist because that pesky. What's thing a, what, do a a what do you mean by a writer? What do you mean by a writer? A writer, writer, you're a better you know, writer than you are a lyricist. Fiction, you know, writing, writing, not songwriting. All right. Not lyricist. Because I think you've got some pretty good lyrics. That's why I really? asked you on the show. Really? I would not have asked you if I thought you were a slacker. Okay. Well, hmm. Okay. I think my lyrics are a little bit forced because when I used to write songs way back when, you know, they didn't really rhyme and that, that didn't work. The problem with rhyming is I'm not a poet and I would know what I wanted to say, but then the words wouldn't rhyme. So then I'd pull out the thesaurus and find words that were kind of rhyming, but not quite the right meaning. So I'd have to shift the meaning of the song a little bit. And then it would be like, oh God, all right, this'll, this'll work. So I don't consider that, myself a great lyricist. It's like the, the, weak, the weak link. See, I think that that to me is the process of writing lyrics, what you just described there. Yeah, but you... some people are better at, you know, I like my songs. I'm not trying to, to uh, say I'm horrible, but I think that um, I would say my lyrics are my weak link, according to me. Okay, well, I think you're too hard on yourself because I think the whole process of writing lyrics is you write something and then, oh, this word doesn't rhyme. And so then you have to fill it in with something else. And maybe it doesn't exactly make sense or is not exactly what you want to express. But that's the whole thing of, of having to make something rhyme is forcing it and that changes your, so that kind of is like the muse is forcing you. You are not in control. The muse is saying, you know, you got to go this way because there's nothing else that rhymes with seashell. And you have to come up with- I like your with... version. I like your version of reality better than mine. That's good. Yeah, I'm gonna, I mean- I'm gonna adopt that. I don't know so who- So I should definitely be hired because I'm, you know, so good at Okay, this. give me the pitch if you you need to be hired. Oh, no. I don't do pitches. Can't you're do desperate. Pitches. You're desperate. You, you, you've just lost your job. You have, you have a, a child who needs food and this is the only place you can get a job. Well, then I would probably say the way that I write songs as I start with lyrics, I feel what they feel like, and then I go find the music. So generally there's a confluence between the lyrics and the music. It makes sense on an emotion, they make sense together on an emotional level. So if you want to convey feeling, hire me. Okay. Have you worked with uh, anybody where you actually had to do that, where you did the lyrics and they did the music? No, I've only, I've worked with someone who's written lyrics then I had to tweak them a bit and then I've written the music. I've never yeah. done the I other. I have either. Yeah. I don't... No one's ever hired me to do this. Yeah. Well, I'll hire you. You hire me. We'll pay each other. <laughs> no. $25. I, I won't pay you. I have no money. <laughs> I'll pay you. I'll pay you what you pay me to work. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. You, yeah. Um, okay, so th this I, th I think this gives this gives our listeners, our our viewers, a good sense of who you are. 
<laughs> <laughs> now, here are the technical questions. Oh, God. Uh, could you give me, like, one of your best lyrics that you can think of oh, in God. terms of narrative that's like telling a story? Like, if you had, like, a, is there a line from something that you think is really, a really good line that kind of, you know, tells a story, moves a plot along? Hmm. Uh, only in the song that comes to mind is not exactly plot, <laughs> plot driven. Right. Um, and it's obscure, but it's Lean Into the Mountains. And yeah. the, the chorus of that, you know this because we were I, I know, but that's, but you, that's, um, here's, you get a chance to tell the world. What is, what, like, what is the chorus? How does that go? So the, the, the line, the chorus is Lean Into the Mountains, Let Go Into the Sky, Come Down in Silence. I forget the rest, but that is about a place above Boulder, Colorado, where there's a slope of a hill, and I've been to it many times in my life across many circumstances, and it's like you can, because you're in an angle and the, the uh, continental divide is right there, it's like you could just take off into the sky. Now, and for some reason, I like that line. And it's, it goes, it's, lean into the mountains, let like go, go into the sky, the come sky. down in silence. Huh? Yeah. You got it. Yeah. Well, sing sing a little bit of it. Go. Oh, I'm not. No. No, no. you were singing. Without the guitar. No. Without I'm the not. guitar, really. Can't do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's yeah. lean into the mountains, let go into the sky. What's the next line? Come down in silence. Come down in silence. In, into the wilderness she flies. Into the wilderness she flies. So this is like metaphor. <laughs> Well, uh, because yeah. it's interesting because when I said when I said a narrative, you said, and here is the vision, which is not narrative. It's that's more impressionist. Mm -hmm. Do you not agree? Mm -hmm. I agree. Okay. Well, I like how you translate me into English. It's much better than my version. Very a anything good. else? Any others? Because you're not um, you don't really do a lot of like narratives. You don't do ballad sort of stuff mm -mm. for the most part. <laughs> I did one, but I've, I've ditched it since. Okay, since it's not one of it. your, it's not, it's not your A material. Okay, question number two is the flip side, and you'll have more examples of this, I believe. Could you come up with one or two lyrics that are more impression? I can think of a bunch from your catalog where it's like, it's a description of a scene, it's a description of, something that gives you an impression of where the person is at. Mm -hmm. Now, I know I can. Let me think for a second. I just finished a new song relatively recently. Now I have to remember, it's about my grandparents' house. And the line would be, we'll come back to that. I have to hear it in my head. It's not, or I can look it up on the computer. Can, we, we can't come back. There is no coming uh, back. There's no Can't editing on this. Can't you come how up about, with another question? How about, huh? It's about impression. It, it's like some of your lyrics that leave an impression. Yeah, like, I know what you're asking. What's the um, silk, the, the velvet skirts one? It's called velvet skirts. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, there's a lot of lyrics in that thing. Yeah, but, there are. Yeah. But, but there's something um, about twirling, blah, 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 blah. Hmm. Boy, I'm really bombing this interview. Um, you know my songs. You tell me what it says. I don't. But there's just what there, there's a line in there, like there's a, a a it's velvet skirts. Something about spinning velvet skirts. You're looking it up, aren't you? I'm looking up the other thing, and then I'll come back to velvet skirt. Okay. So the one about my grandparents. That's yeah, so handy having this. Um, Kitchen curtain on the breeze, gravel driveway lined with trees, coffee and homemade bread, the murmur, murmur of voices when I was in bed. That's good. Yeah. And it's impressionist. Velvet skirts, hold on. What did we do before we had computers? Okay. I uh, learned about the part about the velvet skirts is velvet skirts swirl around, winds caress her face, 
the wonder of it all, she opens her hand to fate. <laughs> a little bit of a forced rhyme there. It's all right. I never noticed it. Oh, that's good. So the velvet skirts is like, what is that scene? I always imagined like almost like a, like a, a salon in like 1910 in Russia. And there are young girls on the verge of maturity in velvet skirts. Yeah, it's actually, without going into too much detail about it. It's, it's about a, a sailor in World War II. <laughs> it's about a sailor in World War How did you know? Um, it's about a, a, a relationship, a woman and a man. And it's about hopefulness rather than what eventually happened. And so it's, I just took images from that. So why is it velvet skirts in the plural? Um, I don't know. I don't have a good reason. Okay. Now, actually, this sort of demonstrates something, which is my sister, the poetry professor, always says, she said something about like, poetry and lyrics are different because in lyrics, there's like somehow there's this, the, the music is with it, and that adds a, a, like this additional thing. And so you can write a song and have it be about something, and everybody else will perceive it to be differently, different in part because there's this music in the background, it's not stripped mm -hmm. down. So it's mm -hmm. like once you write a song, you're like, here's what it's about. Mm -hmm. And then, no, it's whatever the people listening to it think it's about. And yeah. And, the, and so for me, it's like, oh, this is great imagery. I see this like Russian salon and your thing or whichever direction you are, your yeah. thing is, is, is completely different. It that kind of reminds me if you read the back of a, a jacket of a book and you've read the book and you think it's about this and the description is like completely different or a whole lot better than it was, but it's... Yeah everyone's interpretations. But music's great, lyrics are great because they're vague enough, especially when you can't get the exact word you want because the thing doesn't rhyme. And so imagery can help build that ambivalence that people can then choose whatever vision yeah. they want. So let's do another one. You ready? I'm ready, you, you should, said four you questions, this is about 15, go ahead. You should have re you reviewed all your lyrics prior to this, but I told oh, you to prepare for it. So you mm -hmm. did the right thing. Okay, next, all right, I'll see. Yes, what, especially. in terms of wordplay, tricky wordplay or rhyming? Oh, God. Tricky wordplay. Mm. Those are your songs, not mine. I know, I know. <laughs> but Tricky wordplay. I know, but what is in, in, of the things you have, go into your mind mm. and, and, and try to think of, or, or elegant wordplay, or just like, a really cool phrase that you came up that's got like, you know, oh, real gosh. poetic originality to it. This may not be answerable. Go deep into your subconscious. Don't think, just respond. <laughs> Blank. <laughs> um, I don't know. Huh? I can't think of anything. Now, is it? Do you find it um, your big hit? And we know what your big hit is. Which I hardly play anymore because I'm so sick of it. You mean right. passionate love? Yeah. Yeah. Now, all the songs that I've been, all the stuff I've been talking about, telling a story, doing a strong impression. Yeah. Would you say that that is that 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 song is one in which you feel is very strong in terms of telling a story? or impression, or rhyming? Well, I don't relative know to your, Relative to your other stuff. I think it's a bit, I mean, it's on one level, it's straightforward. On another level, it's a little bit vague. Uh, what is your question? Does it, is it strong comparatively lyrically to the yeah, other? Yeah, to, to the other things you've written. How do you think it compares? You personally, I know the public loves yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the uh, and there, I've got a few quote unquote hits too. Mm -hmm. It's probably one of my better better ones. And you know that song and the, is the only song it came to me in a dream. The lyrics and the music, and then I got up and wrote down what I could remember, and then filled in some of the pieces. What is like? What's the first verse? 
I am awake through the night, barefoot on the wooden floor, alone in the silver moonlight, strike deep a lost chord. Okay, I, I, I kept thinking that, that that one seemed like it was more of a pop tune, but maybe it's just because the chorus is so much of like a pop yeah. tune. Yeah, but of then course, there's two words, passionate love, passionate <laughs> love. <Right>. Passionate love. <laughs> right. Really great lyrics. No, but I like the barefoot on the, the barefoot on the wooden floor is yeah, good. Yeah, I like that imagery too. That's a good one. Uh, it actually has a certain amount of uh, uh, narrative where there's action taking place. Right. It's the middle yeah. of the night, you're waking up, blah, blah, blah. You're barefoot on the wooden floor. You haven't got alone. Mm -hmm. yeah. Silver yeah. moonlight, yep. Silver moonlight, all right. Yeah. What? Well, well, it conveys uh, longing. Huh? It conveys longing. It conveys longing. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I have I have the bonus questions and we're actually uh, we're doing okay for time. Okay. Uh, uh bonus question and this is more embarrassing than okay. anything else. <laughs> what musician are you sort of ashamed of to admit you like? And this can be a particular act or it can be a, a, like a genre, something that you know that you like probably has influenced you, but it's like, it's, it's something that you know that people say is you're not supposed to like. Hmm. Being a serious artiste. There's one song by Mike, I think his name is Michael McDonald. Mc yeah. Who's with, uh, it, Michael it's a McDonald. Disco, used with a, it, was, it has a disco-ish sound, and I really hate disco, but it's such a great song. I think it was, he was when it was with the Doobie Brothers, and it was, um, okay, what's the name of the song? Anyway, I would not. He came from somewhere it. back in her long ago. That song? Again, try that again. <laughs> I, I might be violating <laughs> copyright law. Yeah, but okay, who no believes much. he sees? Um, no, I think it's about. Um, hmm. I don't know. That's not very ashamed. I mean, the Doobie Brothers—they yeah. did actually some very interesting stuff. Yeah, no. I like for me, shame around this. For me, well, it's the Go Go's. Oh boy. Well, I can see why you're deeply ashamed of that now. <laughs> see? You, really? You, you like the go-go's? Like, yeah, I kind of do. Wow. You know, I, it's it's, you know, I can't explain it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, so so that's what I'm talking about, shame. Yeah. Doobie Brothers. See, I don't have a, you got to get you got to get I don't have weirdness around what I listen to because to, basically I don't listen to a lot except in the car on my CD player in XPN. So, and you know, my music friends listen to their stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. All right. Now, the counter to that is mm -hmm. what critically acclaimed musician do you dislike somebody who everyone says you're supposed to like them but you just don't hmm. like a friend of mine I, I asked him about this once and he was like bob dylan and i said why and he goes he's got a lousy voice and you know yeah he, he kind of does you know yeah well I, I mean i this is sacrilegious but i happen to agree with him i like some of bob dylan stuff like from Br blood on the tracks and a couple of the early pieces i would not listen to him on purpose and the other one here's the real sacrilegious one okay good i i don't like bruce springsteen at all i like okay. one of his songs I, I mean at all it's like oh turn the ball see that that that's the answer yeah. that's the answer now michael mcdonald he sings like this and bruce springsteen <laughs> he sings like this and bob dylan he sings like this i think it'd be great if they all did like a, an album together and be <laughs> Yeah, I think I won't buy that one. Yeah, yeah, that would that would work. All right, well, I think we are, it looks, the clock on the wall says it's been about a half hour. Well, thank you, and That's Jay. all the more attention span anybody has in the digital world. Yes. So would you like to tell our viewers if there's some place they can hear your music, even in quarantine, when hmm. everything is all screwed up in the world? Maybe well, you do. I, I, I have a website, but I have not updated it in some time with any new music, but okay. I'll give it to you anyway. It's, it's carolyncottmusic.com. 
Okay, so maybe this will spur you on because yeah. of all the people who watch this will just, there'll be a flood. Oh, I'm sure. I was going to be, it's going to break the system. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for coming by. Yay. Thank you, Jake. Good to see you. And so this was Carolyn Cott, singer, songwriter from, where are you from? Chester. <laughs> Spring City, sort of. Spring City, outside of Philadelphia, 45 minutes outside of Philadelphia. And if she's in your neighborhood, check her out. She writes good songs. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye.